Fight 277. This is against uh, Pet John Chai. And it's part chip rolls, so you can see we're not wearing gloves. These are just ropes, wraps. And uh, there's no points given in this uh, format, so there's no score. You either knock someone out or it's a draw. Uh, you can see, you can see Pet Dan Chai is significantly bigger than me. Um, she had a really nice, just like one two. Um, she's southpaw. And uh, we were watching her warm up. Carhat was in my corner, and he's like, "Oh, I think she's softball." As he was watching her, and so I was kind of anticipating like which direction these strikes were going to be coming from. But my guard here is pretty good. But earlier in the round, I kind of had a very inflexible. Um, stiff guard and some of those punches got through. I will tell you that with rope wraps, no gloves, with, with just the ropes, um, punches are strong. Like they really just resonate through your face a lot harder than with gloves where they kind of, uh, they're still hard, but they like slide around on your face. Um, wraps, like rope wraps don't slide. They give you superficial cuts everywhere and they just really uh, like reverberate around the bone. So that's the end of round one. This was in uh, Samut Sakon, which is outside of Bangkok, a little bit to the left, right on the water. Um, it smelled very <laughs> oceany <laughs> while we were getting ready. You can see that long one too she's got. And again, there's no points. So, um, you know, her landing these punches are not, not kicking, doesn't matter in cart chip. Like, Using all of Muay Thai's weapons is uh, wonderful if you can do that, but because there's no points, there's no strategy to technically, uh, you know, trying to kick the middle versus trying to uh, elbow someone in the face or something like that, because you really are just trying to knock someone out. That one came in. I'm just trying to like close distance on her, and she's got this like load up one two that's so long. I'm just trying to kind of like stalk her down. There we go. I'm starting to land on her face a little bit. I'm trying to find my timing a little bit. She is backing me up with those. But I just follow her right back when she tries to breathe. My teeps were working on her. So because she has this big one too, I started teeping. These teeps are not for points. These teeps are just because I'm trying to like interrupt her pattern in order to kind of establish my own. Got a little bit of clinch and knee in there. These refs break my clinch really crazy. They didn't used to. <laughs> this is maybe my 15th or 16th cart chip fight. That one snapped her head back. I've got a good lock here. Again, these knees don't score. There's no scoring. So this is really just trying to wear her down. Uh, this is not trying to like win a decision. She's right back up. It's a little bit slower now. So I know I'm trying to like wear her down. I'm trying to punch her body a little bit. Her punches are kind of glancing off me a little bit more now. I knew when I had her in the clinch that there really was not a lot that she knew uh, to snuff or to change angles uh, to deal with me. So I really was just trying to like close, close the gap as much as possible because on the ends of her punches was not a fun place to be. Ooh, it's an elbow from me. <laughs> that voice you're hearing right there, that's the promoter. His name is Pipet. Bet in Thai means a duck, um, and it's a play name. So it's it's like the nickname that many, many men have. Uh, Jaron Tong actually has the same play name, Bet. Uh, it's a very cute name. Both of them are Southerners. I don't know if it's more common from the South or not. So uh, Kevin and I pieced this together from the live stream that, that went up uh, for the fight. Kevin didn't live stream it himself, so we have a little bit of a like stitching together Frankenstein version of this fight. So you can see my guard is a little bit down as I'm farther away, and then I'm trying to bring it up as I close in. That's good, relaxation-wise, to not be like tense all the time, but you really do have to have the correct timing. <laughs> that teeth was good. The, uh, the announcer, the promoter, he just called me Jom Sadit. This means the ultimate sadist, and this is like my uh, alias for this fight promotion. They call me Jom Sadit uh, because I got cut so many times early in uh, when I started fighting for them and just kept coming forward. <sighs> they just break that, <laughs> they break that clinch like crazy. It's amazing because you can only win by knockout and I can knock people out in the clinch, but they really just want to break it as fast as possible. It makes no sense. It'd be like if you stopped people from after they punched a one-two, you stopped them. They like couldn't do any more 
strikes after that. It's very odd. Oh, getting her in here. This was the... Um, you didn't get to see when we got in the ring, but this is the first fight ever in Thailand. I went through the middle ropes. They didn't lift the bottom rope for me, um, which is how women enter the ring in most rings. But since Entertainment Muay Thai has taken over, in Lumpani and Rajadamran, they have women go through the middle ropes now, and they actually adopted that to this fight as well, which uh, 277 fights in Thailand, and this is the first time uh, I've, I've gone through the middle rope, so that was kind of an amazing thing for me, experience-wise. This was also the first time I could actually understand Karaha in my corner. I can't hear him a lot when I'm like actually in the ring, and then when I come back to the corner, a lot of times when he's cornering for me, I, I get what he's saying to me, what he wants from me. Um, but since COVID, so like three years, he wears a mask in the corner and I have no idea what he's saying to me. <laughs> I know what he generally would say to me because I know what he wants. He wants me to teep, he wants me to kind of angle, things like this. But this was the first fight that maybe even because I was kind of like calmer, I was actually having fun in this fight. I kind of had more um, self-awareness and, and calm than I've had in, in a lot of my fights. He's cornered for me for probably 20 plus fights. Um, I could actually hear him and understand him. And I was like, yes, I will continue teeping because that is working in this fight. Sun is starting to go down right here on like a bay. I think it was actually just a bend in the river. Um, but there were lots of like uh, fishing boats docked in there. Um, it's kind of a cool little town. First time being there. The cool thing about Kartchuk is it's a, this promotion, uh, Siam Kartchuk, is it's a little bit like Thai fight in that it's for domestic tourism. So they go to different places. There's my teep. It's a nice uppercut from her that I didn't realize happened. They go to different places, and so I get to see different places around Thailand being on this promotion. Uh, I've gone to the south for them a couple of times. The only times I've been to the south originally were from them. So my face is very red, you can see. That's from contact, but that's also from me holding my breath. She's timing me. She's like waiting for me to come in and trying to time me with that long left that she has, which is really good. But my guard here is now getting more flexible. I have a little bit of a Dracula guard going on, although I'm kind of covering my face rather than just wrapping around my jaw. But this, he's letting this go a little bit longer than he had been. It's once we get to the ropes that he kind of grabs us. I'm stopping it there, even though we're not in the ropes. So I've got her here in a corner. I'm trying to like time my way in because I don't want to be clipped by her punches on my way in. Uh, not points wise, but because they actually like blur my vision and like they ring, they're really, really hard. Uh, she got her head out the ropes. I was trying to knee her in the head. She slipped her head out the ropes. She's, you can see she's very, very tired at this point, but she's still hitting very hard. Like when she swings, she swings with everything she's got. It's a very like, oof, that one landed. She's trying to like block my knees with her arms, which is not a great idea. I think I got close to her face there, but didn't actually hit it. But it's very stressful when your head gets pushed down in the clinch. So I know that I'm stressing her and emotionally draining her, even if it's just like secondary to physical. Here, these knees are really starting to drain her a lot. This is round four. So whatever investment I'm making in this round, I'm hoping to be able to cash in round five. But because it's cart chip, there's no like dance backwards in round five. Actually, I'm just trying to knock her out at this point. It's a, uh, it's not easy. She's very game. I'm, her punches have gotten less direct and uh, less impactful because I'm blocking them better and she's tired. But you just, you do not want to be hit straight in the face by just uh, rope wraps. It really, really rings you. It is, um, it is not true that it's only superficial whatever when you're wearing small gloves or when you're wearing uh, just the ropes or whatever the thing is. Like the impact is really, really uh, defined and direct and it's, uh, it's right in there. A couple of uh, fights ago, I think it was my last Kart Shook fight, um, Pet Bly Fa punched me. I think she was also South Southpaw, she punched me in the face and my vision blurred for like 30 seconds in that round. I've never had that before. I've never had blurred vision from impact ever in my life. And that was from the like, the um, directness of the rope wraps rather than it being kind of deflected by the size and um, smoothness of a glove that, because you have Vaseline on your face, you know, it doesn't, 
it doesn't hit as directly. Even if you hit directly, it's gonna kind of like slide on the surface. Again, ropes don't slide at all. I had a, I had a bloody part of my nose up here. Um, I didn't think it was broken. I wasn't having any trouble breathing or anything like that. And when I was kind of like wiggling it, it didn't move at all. I've broken my nose four times, so I know what a broken nose feels like. We had the doctor look at it and he was kind of like, it's fine. Um, but a few days after this fight, I was like, I think it is. <laughs> I think it is broken. It was very like, uh, it felt much more um, off-centered than it had been before. Uh, but, you know, still not having a lot of difficulty breathing out of it. I think that it was just more swollen than I thought it was going to be. Um, but this is, again, you know, like a glove has a little bit of shock absorption when it hits you, whereas like a bare knuckle or, uh, you know, something that's not a lot of padding or just ropes themselves, they, they stick and grind <laughs> to whatever it is that they're hitting. Um, so I had a lot of like uh, bruising and kind of like scratches around the side of my face after this fight. But most of that actually was from the first round when my guard was not very flexible. I took most of the punches to the face early and then my guard became much better and more flexible and I think that I was mostly having her punch my elbows after that. Hmm. I got one in. You can see her little like whip when she throws that kick that she's throwing it with a lot of impact. There's a, there's a big weight difference between the two of us so uh, when she hits me with something it's a, it's a size disparity in terms of what the, uh, what the impact is like. I hope I hit hard. It seems like I had some impact when I was punching her. I, I didn't really kick that much in this, but my knees were definitely affecting her. You can see here she's starting to get a little bit wider because of the fatigue. This is one of the things about being a Muay Thai fighter is that people who have good techniques, those techniques are not as good when they're tired. So you really want to wear people down, which is why you'll see Muay Thai fighters start hard earlier in fights than like a femur style would. She's a little bit red around the nose. I guess I'm landing some stuff there too. Elbows here. Oh, that one got in. But I'm like pushing her arm across her own face, so she's kind of getting like pinned. <laughs> like the stalking game now. Um, I think I could have stalked her a little bit harder. <laughs> so the ref kind of gently, gently letting her fall there. It's nice that he didn't like keep us up. Sometimes refs will keep someone from falling altogether and it feels like they've stolen a point from you. There's no points in this, so that doesn't matter. The, uh, the announcer is saying that uh, it's in my blood to fight like this, that like there's no stopping Sylvie. It's nice to be able to understand Thai and hear Thai uh, about myself when I'm fighting. Uh, when I first started understanding Thai in the ring, it was not always very complimentary. <laughs> started getting in my head. This promoter likes me though, so. Ooh, those both landed. She's starting to grab the ropes there a little bit. Ooh. She's younger than me, so her going to my feet here is, um, they call it Wai Run Pi, and it means to lie to someone who's older than you. Um, I kind of like pulled her up off of the ground. <laughs> Kevin said it was really cool to see as I like kind of lifted her up. We go to her corner together. I actually really, really liked her. We talked after this fight. We took a bunch of photos. Um, I showed her how she needs to kind of cross face when someone grabs her the way I was grabbing her in the clinch, just like this momentary teaching moment of like how to deal with someone who clinches because her clinch is really not developed yet. Um, but oh, her like, her one twos are very, very long and very effective. And I think that uh, in the kind of like festival fights, fighting not in stadia or not on like really big shows yet, I think this is gonna stop a lot of her opponents, kind of keeps you at a distance. Uh, in Thai they call it graduk, to like meet, to have bones. I have bones so I can kind of walk through stuff that she's throwing at me, but it's a, I definitely felt it. <laughs> it's definitely an impact to all of that. I like that I was landing some punches too. Um, I've been working on this a lot, like in my sparring. I hit Yokun Pan with punches all day and then I don't do it in fights and I totally have this thing that's like if you do it against your sparring partners and your friends in the gym, you don't have to feel bad about it as long as you do it to your opponents too. So. This ref uh, actually apologized to Karahat in the corner as my corner. He was like, I'm sorry that I'm breaking the clinch so fast. <laughs> Just don't do it. Like you don't have to apologize. Just stop doing it. But he was like, oh, Kotot, I'm, uh, I'm breaking it very fast. So draw right there. Hey, we are in 
the car driving back from fight 277, 277, which was in Samut Sakan, which I don't think we've ever been to before. No, so that was kind of cool. It was like right on this bend in the river, which brings in a lot of ocean water. So it smelled like the ocean, which is not actually a pleasant thing for me. <laughs> uh, Karaha was in my corner and Karaha has a serious problem with like salty air. <laughs> it was like, it was a little bit rough in the hours waiting for that. But it was just an in and out strike. Kevin and I have gotten really good at this of like just kind of coming in doing the fight, getting out. Uh, it was Kartchuk, you can see this by my face, um, and it was a draw because there was no knockout, but I'm actually pretty happy uh, with the fight. I'm pretty happy with things that I was able to do. I'm happy with what fucking, this girl was coming at me. <laughs> like, I'm glad at how hard she was fighting because it created uh, and presented different challenges and things that um, are adjacent to what I've been working on in my sparring, but I actually don't get directly in my sparring. Um, Yodenpon does not actually try to kill me that much, so that was really cool to be able to kind of like work those under that kind of pressure. Um, so thank you to Karahat for being in my corner, and uh, we just dropped him and his friend off uh, in Bangkok on the way home, um, and now we're going to go home and be home. We're going to be in our home after <laughs> fighting, which we don't get to do all the time because we have to travel so far. In three fights, kilometers, so take the exit on the right. About to exit. Um, thank you everyone who watched the live stream. For those of you who didn't catch it, I always do my voiceover and then put it on YouTube. Um, hopefully I'll do that in a relatively... You got two fights. Coming. I have two fights coming, so this one will be after the last one. Um, but 277, draw, adding to my draw, um, and thank you everyone who supports me. Fufu.